of songs as we gather to thank God to celebrate his faithfulness in the life of our wife, our mother, our sister, our friend, a grandmother, one who served God, one who loved God, a worshiper, a soldier of Christ. But we gather in that confidence that hope that we have, that eternal living hope we have in Christ Jesus, that indeed she has run her race and she has finished her course and indeed is in the bosom of God the Father. And so we gather today to sing hymns, ancient and modern, to sing contemporary songs, and she was a lover of music. And so today, as we come into God's presence, let us rejoice in that hope that we have and know that indeed God is a faithful God. We'll start with our opening prayer. Please welcome Pastor Africanus Sambe Pele as he leads us in prayer.
Praise the name of the Lord. Can we please rise to our feet? You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Our Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. Oh, Pelo, yeah, oh, Baba. Father and our God, the eternal rock of ages, Holy Spirit, we welcome and acknowledge your awesome presence here today. We thank you for our lives and the privilege that we have to be here today. Not everybody went to bed and woke up this morning. Lord, we say thank you. Well, Father, we are gathered today to celebrate you in the life of your daughter, Pastor Mrs. Adurunke Anibaba Ni Adibanjo. We thank you for a life well spent. We thank you for a life of impact. And we thank you for the beautiful family she left behind. We are comforted, O oh Lord, that she's resting in your bosom. Be thou glorified, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the great comforter. We ask that in your mercy you comfort our family in the name of Jesus Christ. We commit the whole of this service into your great and mighty hands that, Lord, you will take control. And at the end of the day, O oh Lord, we'll come back to give you all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. The choir will lead us in a session of worship as we remain standing. Hallelujah. Power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Power and might be unto the Lord forever. Wisdom, thanksgiving, wisdom, thanksgiving, and all the other.
let us confess it today. You are, you are the reason I leave. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the reason. Yeah, you are. and the life we honor you thank you for comfort and strength for your people to you alone be all the glory for it's in Jesus name we have worshipped amen amen when darkness veils his lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil we take our first hymn my hope is built on nothing less. It's on page two of our programs.
completed our first Bible reading this service uh, will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 to 58. Please welcome to take this lesson, uh, granddaughter of Pastor Ronke Anibaba. Welcome Similolua Queening. Please make her welcome. The Bible reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall stand and theatre shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Similolua Queening. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Our next hymn is on page three. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We shall sing seated. <laughs>
Amen. Our second Bible reading will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Please welcome to take this lesson, Timmy Sayo, Annie Baba. Please make her welcome. This is another granddaughter. Good evening. The second Bible reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. But we know that when this early tent we live in is taken down, <clears throat> that is, when we die and leave this early body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our, our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For when we put on our heavenly bodies, we will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these early bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of the, these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home in the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these early bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him, for we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this early body. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, let's appreciate Tim Messiah. Saved by grace alone, this is all my plea. Jesus died for all mankind, and Jesus died for me. We'll take our hymn, Ore Ofe, On Adunile Tiwa. It's on page four of our programs. We'll sing Seated.
as we go through life's struggles and challenges, sometimes not knowing which way to turn, where to go, looking for direction, weighed down by troubles, there is one we know we can trust in, one who will hold us. Indeed, he is the one who is our glory and the lifter up of our heads. The Bible also reminds us that our times are in God's hands. Please welcome the voices in Zion as they sing two songs. Precious Lord, take my hand and I need you to hold my hand. Lord, you know that I'm your 
child And I'm doing the best that I can Why my way gets so hard You know I just don't understand Oh Lord, oh Lord I need you to hold my hand Yeah, I can't make it without Oh, listen to me now As I travel from place to place Many times I'm treated so bad But as I sit and think about I can't miss a friend that I never had Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Yeah. I need you to hold can't make it by myself, oh Lord. oh Lord, no, I need you to hold my head. <laughs> One more thing, church, I'm gonna continue to run for Jesus, even if I have to run alone, <laughs> because it's my heart determination to make Heaven, my home. Oh, Lord. oh Lord. yeah. I need you to hold my head right now, right now, right now, right now. Oh Lord, oh Lord, yeah. I need you to hold my head. Sometimes when God impresses me, I said to hold me, hold me, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, the reason why hold I want you to hold me, Lord. Jesus, because if you don't hold me, hold me. I will surely fall. Jesus, I need your strength. Hold me. I need your mercy, Lord. Jesus, but if you hold me, hold me. everything will be alright. If you hold me, hold me. everything will be fine. Jesus, you are the bomber. Hold me. grandmother, a sister, a friend, a pastor, a soldier of Christ, a child of God. As we gather today, we'll take a few tributes to that life of impact as we share sweet memories. First of all, this evening, please welcome Pastor Kofo Famos. Uh, pastor Mrs. Anibaba was one of the leaders of the marriage counseling unit here at the city of david and so on behalf of the marriage, marriage counseling department please welcome pastor kofu Thomas. please make her welcome as she comes Thank you. 
Jesus. I wish I'm not doing this, but I will do it for mommy. I will do it for mommy. The news that our very dear pastor, Mrs. Adirunke Anibaba, shared her body and gone home was hard. So hard for every one of us in the marriage counseling department to take in. Even now, as the reality of it settles, her signature smiles, as well as her contagious, buoyant disposition, remain very vivid to us. As the oldest member of the department, her voice was always of wisdom that radiated inner calm and peace. Indeed, her usual greeting was shalom. She was so ever willing to take on tax and step into any role assigned to her, even at short notice, especially when, whenever we are short of counselors. She was a mother figure to all of us, and a calm mere period of personal difficulty is a virtue we imbibe from her and we always remember. Writing a tribute about someone ever so caring, resourceful, and loving may not lighten the pain of loss, but it allows us to express our admiration once more for a life that impacted so many people across generations. A woman of immeasurable faith who served God diligently with all her energy. She gave herself to the Lord and yielded herself to be used by God to touch and change many lives in very positive ways. The marriage counseling department and the numerous alumni who have been mentored by Pastor Mrs. Ronke Anibaba will miss her greatly, but we will cherish the memories, beautiful memories of our interactions with her. For when someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Even though we grieve at this loss, our comfort is that her transition to eternal realm is higher is a higher call to the ministry of worship in a land where there is neither night nor pain. Our confidence also is that the Holy Spirit will abide with Pastor Dr. Femi Anibaba, the nuclear family and the ascended family as her, and as, um, her church family as well. Even as we press on in our race, Rest on our beloved sister, mommy, till we meet on resurrection day. Good night, mommy. Thank you. Hallelujah. Please appreciate once again Pastor Kofu Thomas and the marriage counseling department of the city of David. Next, on behalf of uh, the School of Disciples, uh, please welcome Sister Ronke Adeyemi to give a tribute. Good evening, everybody. Uh, for the disciples in the house, greater works. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. I bring greetings to you, sir, from the School of Disciples, the national headquarters. Um, my name is Ronke Adeyemi, the head of the School of Disciples Alumni National Chapters. We have global chapters all over the world, and I'm also the head. I'm the coordinator of the Special Online Executive Global Center, of which Auntie was one of my students. She's also an alumni under the Lagos chapter of the chapters. So I'll, I think I'll just read the tributes. It will be better. 
it came as a root shock. And it's passing. Because as at July, um, Uncle Femi was one of the alumni members that um, officiated at the Global Vigil. And I, had, I was still telling him that his auntie that would be using October 16. I didn't know that she was not even going to be here there. So it was a root shock to us at the School of Disciples, particularly because I would like to start by calling her Disciple Adirunke. I'm privileged to have, to have the same name as her. And that's why she calls me sick. She was an alumni where she completed her disciple training course with great dedication and commitment, exemplifying her true belief in God and Jesus Christ as her redeemer and utmost, in utmost humility. How can we forget the fact that after two or almost two and a half decades, Auntie had done School of Disciples then with Uncle, they both came back to do the refreshers course in 2021, if I remember correctly, March, three nights, seven to 12 midnight. They never slept for one second. They were always the first to log in. And I marveled that this is amazing. I remember that when they finished, they both placed a call over to me. I think I was in Mauritius then. And they said to me that they wanted to do it all over again. I said, Uncle, you're already a disciple. Auntie, you don't need it. All you need is to just come in. That's part of your uh, benefits. And they said, no, we want to become students again. And I asked them a question. Why? And they both said to me that they wanted to make heaven. It was a video call. That they just want to be sure that they made it to heaven. It was as if Auntie knew. Auntie Ronke to some of us, my Auntie Ronke to me personally, Mommy Anibaba to some of us, Disciple Auntie Ronke to some people, Pastor Auntie Ronke to some people. But whatever title we choose to give her, she was indeed, without an iota of doubt, a true soldier of Christ, a royal priest, and a king, all combined in one. She lived the life of a true disciple and apostle of our Lord and Master Jesus. And surely, without an iota of doubt, I know that she slept in the Lord as one. Auntie was, her humility, I cannot even explain it, it's beyond this world. They blended with their classmates who were much younger than them. I think the youngest, the oldest person after them was like 70-something, Uncle Steve, if I remember correctly, 71. The, all the other students were probably 50-something, 40-something, 30-something. And they blended as if they were mates. They never missed any lecture, not one. They were all... Auntie always came in first. She won her race. She ran it with courage, never losing her praise nor her faith. And I'm sure that she's now resting victoriously in the Lord, having joined the saints triumphant and the cloud of witnesses adoring her crown of righteousness. As spoken by Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4, 7, as I round up 7 to 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved is appearing. Uncle, you said something to me, and I want to say this to you, sir. Yesterday when I was with you, you said to myself and Kofu, and you looked at us with some of your family members and said, ah, because she would have coped, she would be stronger. For those who don't understand what I said, that auntie should have waited and he left because she is strong. And I looked at you and I said to you, Uncle, the Holy Spirit will strengthen you. I, re I, I say that again in affirmation on this holy altar, that indeed the Holy Spirit will stand by you in the name of Jesus. He will keep you. He will keep your family. He will keep every single one of you. And he will give you strength on the inside. I leave you in parting, Uncle, as I end this tribute with Matthew 5, 4, 
for Femi and the siblings as well. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That simply means, the four there means without an iota of doubt, so I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will comfort you. May Auntie's beautiful soul, may, may she continue to rest in peace in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the Unker DME and the School of Disciples. Next, please join me in welcoming uh, to give a tribute on behalf of the Region 20 elders. Uh, welcome, Pastor Fola Shade Olaya Shegun. Please make her welcome as she comes. Good evening, Pastor ID, all the members of the pastorate, and the congregation here present. Pastor Obafemi Anibaba is the chairman and the regional coordinator of the elders in Region 20. This is a tribute in honor of Mrs. Aderonke Agbeke Anibaba, who until her death was his wife. Then I had a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their works follow them. Revelation 14, 13. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. And he said to me, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. The news came as a shock to us in the regional elders' council that Mrs. Aderonke Anibaba, our chairman's wife of his youth, the love of his life, had died. Her candle had blown out in the wind. Alas, another saint militant had translated into being a saint triumphant. Our gentle auntie, with the reassuring smile all the time, had gone to be the, with the Lord in paradise. Why, auntie? You showed no sign of illness when you left in July. And August came, and we were referring to you in the past. The mystery had taken place. Auntie had slept. She had changed mortality and had given way to immortality. Then we remembered Isaiah 57 1 that the righteous perishes and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Our ever smiling soul winner had been taken away from the evil to come. God loves his son. He will not suffer the rod of the wicked to rest upon the lot of the righteous. Neither will he allow their proud waters to go over their soul. Dear Pastor Runke, you were a great evangelist, a passionate soul winner. And we had walked together on the street of Amadu Beloway, Lagos and in the neighborhood of the city of David, distributing tracts. When you became the head of the Evangelism Committee of Wisdom Group City of David, the committee became very vibrant and active, going on medical outreaches to as far as he could do, and visiting countless motherless babies' homes and orphanages. No doubt, your crown of life had been laid out for you. We remember the roles played in the marital counseling unit, the many homes that have been stabilized through your counseling intervention. You have touched so many lives, pulling many back from the edge of hell. Though the night has fallen for you, auntie, we know you are in a place where there is no darkness and the light there shines perpetually. 
you are with your maker, now singing and dancing and clapping to your Lord. You have passed through the pearly gates and joined the clouds of witnesses to encourage us to keep the faith. Rest in peace. The strife is all. The battle is done. The victory of life is won. The song of triumph has begun. Hallelujah. From the Secretariat of the Regional Elders Council. Thank you. Hallelujah. Once again, let's appreciate Pastor Fola Shade, Olaya Shego, and the Region 20 Elders Council. Next, please welcome on behalf of the Wisdom Group of the City of David, Mrs. Hannah Egere. Please make her welcome as she comes. Good evening, church. Good evening, Pastor Idi, Pastor Siju. Good evening, our beloved Pastor Anibaba, the entire family. On behalf of Wisdom Group, I take the tribute. Our dear sister, dependable friend, elder, pastor, and the wife of youth to our very own Dr. Obafemi Anibaba. It is challenging and difficult to write this tribute in your honor. Consider the fact that you bade us farewell to travel to UK for a short while. We are all hopeful you will return and will continue to run the race set before us. But alas, it was time for your transition to the other side of the world, the, of, to the other side of eternity. Elder Ronke was an epitome of humility compassionate, a woman of great faith. She was always praying, so zealous and passionate about evangelism. She had compassion for winning souls. Hence, the head of the evangelism subcommittee of the Wisdom Group in the city of David. In all her evangelism drive and outreaches, she always planned, organized, and executed them successfully. She intentionally set out to touch lives and bring them to Christ our Savior, thereby making a difference and making the scriptures in Proverbs 11:30 b that he that winneth souls is wise. As chairman of the evangelism subcommittee of Wisdom Group, she led as a servant leader sought and listened to every opinion before decision was taken. She was tireless, selfless, gave herself, her time, and substance to the group's activity. She was upright, meticulous, gave account of every expenditure of all the activities and programs undertaken by the Evangelism Committee. Pastor Adoronke Anibaba was a true disciple of Christ. She ran her race on this side of eternity and her focus and her goal was heaven. She was gentle as a dove but firm in her convictions. A good counselor, she listens with rapt attention and smiles before giving a response. She was an encourager. Hallelujah. Pastor Mrs. Adoronke Anibaba was to her husband. A constant companion, loyal and devoted wife. She was a mother hen, a protective and caring mother to her children, grandchildren, and spiritual children. She worked hand in hand with her husband and built a Christian home. Undoubtedly, we are going to miss our dear Auntie Ronke. Beloved wife, mother, and grandmother. We pray for our beloved husband, Pastor Dr. Obafemi Anibaba, that God will comfort you, sir, your entire and loved ones, as he has promised through his Holy Spirit, our balm in Gilead. 
the Holy Spirit, your helper and comforter is holding your hand and is leading you through the, these turbulent times. Just take your rest in him. You will surely come out stronger than you can ever imagine. Abba Father, we carry you, keep you in good health and maintain your lot to your hurry age in Jesus' name. Be assured that this new chapter of your family will be full of God's mercy and grace. To Olufemi, Olukemi, Tamilola, your spouses, children, that is the grandchildren of our beloved sister, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Spirit, Holy Spirit will do a quick work in your hearts and restore your joy in Jesus' name. Your beloved mother fought a good fight of faith and finished her course. She was passionate about winning souls for Jesus. She loved to reach out to the weak. This she did to her last days here on the side of eternity. She finished well and strong. The truth of the matter is that she is with a cloud of witnesses cheering you to pick up your buttons and run the race set before you to finish well and strong. We pray for you, your children, that the Lord God Almighty will comfort, sustain you through this season and you will come out completely strengthened in a way that you can ever imagine. So the church of God, weeping may enjoy for night, but joy comes in the morning. The Lord will keep us to the end in Jesus' name. All is well. Sleep on, beloved of the Lord. Sleep on, Auntie Adorenke Anibaba. Good night, daughter of Zion. We love you, but God loves you most. This is the tribute from Wisdom Group. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Once again, let's appreciate Mrs. Hannah Egeri and the Wisdom Group of the city of David. God is faithful. And indeed, he promises us in Isaiah 49, 15 and 16. I will not forget you. Indeed, he says, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Please welcome Dickness Ebo. Adibamo as she sings. Remember me. Hallelujah. I don't mind. Do dark and drilly. I don't mind my cross to bear. But I know in God's own time, you set me free. And in calling your own. Oh, dear Lord, please remember me. Remember me. When tears are falling down, remember me. Troubles are all around 
remember me Hallelujah Set free from present sorrow We cheerfully can say Let the unknown tomorrow Bring with it what it may It can bring with it nothing But he will bear us through we we'll take our next hymn on page five of our programs. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he sings. We shall sing seated. Please welcome Mojola Akinwale 
another granddaughter as she wins. Please make her welcome. This Bible reading is taken from John chapter 11, verse 18 to 27. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house, then said, Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, thou he were dead, yet he shall he live. And whosoever, whosoever lived and believed in me shall never die. Believe thou this. She said him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Mujola. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I, in my Savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. And next hymn on page seven, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Shall we all please rise?
few more tributes. And first in this segment, please join me in welcoming Mrs. Bolaji Adebanjo to give a tribute to her sister-in-law. Please make her welcome as she comes. Praise the Lord. My name is Omobolaji Adibanjo, and I'm here to pay my respects to the family. But most importantly, I'm here representing my husband, Professor Oludotu Adibanjo, and our two boys, Babatunde and Oladehli Adibanjo. And we're saying to the Anibabas, it is well. I'm actually singing, not expressing my emotions in words, but I'm singing. And the title of the song is, It Is Well. When peace, like a river, attends my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. We. 
Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Mrs. Bolaji Adebanjo. Next, please welcome Mrs. Dukwe Adeomi to come and give a tribute to her sister. Please welcome Mrs. Dukwe Adeomi. Make her welcome as she comes. Good evening, uh, men of God, sisters and brothers in the Lord, friends and family. I'm going to give a tribute on behalf of my husband and myself as I, uh, as I read through my, my inward, my personal thoughts about her. I grew up with my sister, Mrs. Aderonke Anibaba, at Shofuntere Street in Aapa Road with my other siblings. She was gentle in spirit, very loving and willing to let things go. She was meticulous in everything she did and could not be rushed at all. She had long hair and hated getting it cut. My parents insisted that we kept our hair short even as teenagers, and Mamolu Femi, as we fondly call her, would fight, uh, would cry and fight the Baba the entire time. <laughs> when our most senior sister, Mrs. Rushewe, left for Britain, we all shared our clothes, and there was a particular blouse that <laughs> There was a particular blouse that both of us wanted. I insisted that she should give me the blouse. She refused. Our mother asked her to let go to our junior sister. She did willingly, and guess what happened to the blouse? The blouse got burnt while I was ironing it, <laughs> and I never used it. She, show, she showed sympathy, she expressed her kindness and showed sympathy and taught me a lesson I have not forgotten. We regularly went places together and the one I remember very well was, the visit, was, the, uh, was when we visited one of our friends who was getting engaged in a battle. Many years later, that friend Professor Mrs. Nkashai is now my, is now my, uh, our son married my daughter. I wrote to her while she was in Britain with her, with her family to share my excitement about my college boyfriend who was a medical student. She wrote back strongly discouraging me from continuing the relationship. My boyfriend and I usually read each other's letter, and he read hers. He replied to her, expressing his love, loyalty, and uh, loyalty, and stressing that he was a, is a Christian. My dear and concerned sister addressed both of us in our reply and gave her our support for. She accepted him as her brother, and she would at times communicate with him more than After we got married, we stayed with her family before getting our own home. She also stayed with us in London to deliver her last daughter, Damilola. We spent a lot of time together before we, we moved to Cardinal. My sister truly loved her husband 
and would go to any length to keep her family. She was selfless in supporting her husband, her husband Bruce Femi. When she accepted Christ as her savior, she walked towards righteousness to the end of her life, committing to things of God in the church, encouraging her children and especially her grandchildren to live a godly life. She often expressed a desire for all her grandchildren to know Christ and be deep in the word of God. And she worked hard to support this. She was the director of the family business, Copias Nigerian Limited, for a long time, even while her father was alive. She worked tirelessly to run the company with integrity despite the many challenges. By God's grace, she was successful and she retired at the age of 70. My sister was in London for, for her family vacation and planned to attend my 70th birthday on August 24th. I called to confirm their arrival date. She had made Bros firm to change their tickets for Cali from California to ensure she did not miss any of my birthday celebrations. Ten days before my birthday, I called her and she expressed, a painful, she expressed how painful it was that she, was, she would not be able to attend. I prayed for full recovery. I visited her in the hospital in London on August 23rd and got to spend about five hours with her. She was surprised to see me and was very grateful. We focused on a God of miracles. I will never forget the moment we held hands on, uh, on our sick bed as she thanked me for the visit. We, had, we FaceTimed with, my, with our sisters, uh, with, our sister, with our sister, Mrs. Atolagbe and Mrs. Fola Adeba and just spent time with, uh, with us in the hospital that day. She expressed her love for me as I said my goodbye, not knowing that it was the last one. As many of you know, that we just loved our dear loving brother, Mr. Babatunde Adiba, just six months ago. Thank God that we are Christians and we still see the hand of God in our lives. We can rest in the assurance that God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28 We will not live in fear, but trust him to keep all of us in perfect safety. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I, I have resigned to the will of God. God's will has been fulfilled and we are forever grateful to our God. I believe that my sister, Mrs. Ade Ronke, Anibaba Niyadebanjo Omwelekurajebo has completed her mission on earth and she is with her father and God. How are we preparing for our exit out of this perilous world? It is only in Christ Jesus that we can win the battle of death. Please, let us not mourn her, but celebrate her life. I will miss her dearly, but I am rest assured that she is with the Lord. Thank you for coming to celebrate my dear sister. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Once again, let's celebrate Mrs. Dupe Adeome. Next, please welcome to give a tribute on behalf of the grandchildren of uh, their Pastor Ronke Anibaba, welcome Similolua, queening as she comes. Please welcome her. Don't stop clapping until she comes. Thank you. Praise the Lord. This is a tribute to our grandma, who we love very much. 
It was very sad to hear about her passing because we all hoped to be leaving the hospital with her. Our family was very close and we all lived in the same compound and we saw each other very often. Every Saturday morning, she would wake up early to make Ogi and Akara for us every Saturday morning and we would come to her house and talk to her. She would tell us different stories of her childhood and read the Bible with us, watch Superbook, which were Bible stories and explain each one to us. Without her, I don't think that we'll be as close as God as we are now. She taught us what there was to know. She led us down the right path, and she took, a, she took a huge part in our upbringing. Whenever our parents were away, we stayed with her. She helped us with homework and took us to church with her. She was like a second mother to all of us. As a first grandchild, majority of the responsibilities fell on me, which at some point got a lot, and I used to complain all the time. But one day, she sat me down and told me, Similolua, you are the first grandchild and all the others look up to you. Whatever you do, they'll copy you. God made you the first grandchild for a reason and he doesn't give people tasks they're not able to handle. She told me this all the time. One thing she always said was Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He will never leave your side. He will never switch up on you and he will never betray you. No matter what, he was always there for you. She was a very kind-hearted person. She never held grudges against anyone. She was very wise and helpful. She was a problem solver. She was calm and she never really shouted. She was a prayer warrior and, devo and devoted her whole life to Christ. And she went to church about four times a week to spread the gospel to everyone she knew and everything she had said had something related to God in it. If she was here today and she saw all of us crying and mourning, she would laugh at us and say, uh -uh, why are all of you guys crying? Am I not going to see Jesus? God said there's a time for everything and that everything happens for a reason. We may not understand now why he took her away so suddenly. And we might question why did this happen? But remember, he has plans for everyone. He doesn't want anyone to suffer and he's looking out for every one of us. Grandma, on behalf of all the grandchildren, we love you so much and we miss you. It was very hard seeing, seeing you in the hospital bed with oxygen masks around your face and tubes everywhere, but we know that you're in a better place. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Similo Lua. And next, let's welcome Mrs. Damilola Kingwale to give a tribute to her mom. Please make her welcome as she comes. My darling mommy, my dearest mommy, the sweetest mama ever. It feels like a dream, like you traveled, like you come walking in asking about Shea and your grandchildren. This is not as we planned. We were to celebrate your 80th, your 90th, and even more years together. We were even planning our family cruise. You are the heart of our family, and letting you go is by far one of the toughest things I've ever had to do. However, your planning is all for the glory of God. How do I sum up over 42 years of life with you in two minutes of words? It's impossible. There's so much to say about you that it's hard to sum it up in a short tribute. There are some things that words can't express. There are too many stories, adventures, celebrations, discussions, 
great counsel, prayers, laughter, joy, and memories to talk about. These memories are now treasures in my heart. Your greatest love were for God and family. Mommy, you were a godly woman. You live for eternity. You're always seeking to know your father, God. Constantly reading new Christian books, attending Bible courses to expand your knowledge and love of God. You started and ended your days with prayers and thanksgiving. Your daily prayer times were precious to you and you never missed it. You were a woman of faith. No one ever, no one left you without feeling God's presence or getting a word about the love and goodness of God or prayers for them and their families. You live for eternity. Your faith never waned. Even in your short illness, your faith never waned. It only grew stronger and stronger. You believed in our God and you believed in him without a shadow of doubt. Mommy, you were a loving and peaceful wife to daddy, aka your baby true. Living an exemplary, an exemplary and wholesome Christian marriage was core to you. You raised us up to do the same in our marriages, always praying for us, encouraging us, and sharing words of wisdom on how we could do better. A great wife and a companion you were to daddy, loving, very, very patient, playful and gentle. There was never a day we didn't see you both pray together or play together. Too many fond memories of seeing you playing Scrabble or Ludo with daddy's side of Jorut's tricks whenever I saw you were winning. So much laughter you shared discussing various topics, including old childhood stories. You were his confidant and best friend. Now, we take on the baton. We'll look after daddy and keep his company. We'll try to be as patient as you were and make sure we continue your winning streak from time to time. Mommy, you are a sweet and loving, kind and caring mother, mother in Israel. You made sure we grew up in a prayerful and loving home. We never lacked. I was the extrovert child who liked fun adventures and had lots of friends. I still do. <laughs> friends you made sure you met and got to know. You became a mother to many of my friends, encouraging them, praying for them, and asking about their welfare often. I've heard so many people testify of how kind, gentle, and loving you were, how you impacted their lives and marriages. You were so much more to me, simply amazing. You taught me so many life skills, with a gentle spirit, but with a firm determination. You never relented. I am my mother's baby. Growing up, you sacrificed for us, always giving of yourself. I remember when we lived in Festac, waking up at 4 a.m. and leaving home before 5 a.m. so we could get to school in Ikoi on time. Many times you drove us yourself through hours of traffic when your driver didn't show up or was not on time. And most times you had to do the same going back home as well. As the last born, I was your handbag and went most places with you till I had to travel for my studies. You were a hands-on mother and made sure you were involved in our daily life, including school progress, relationships, and our spiritual growth. However, when it was time, you let us fly off to start our own lives, but you stayed close enough. You stayed close enough, encouraging us, nudging us, and praying for us, and cheering us on. You equipped me well. You taught me by showing a great example, and I pray I make you proud and your legacy continues to live on through me. A doting and vested grandmother. I never got to really experience my grandmothers. They passed away when I was two years old. You showed me what being a grandmother was all about. Your grandchildren enjoyed you. You, you indulged them, Sha, but not too much. Every Friday night, sleepovers at grandmas and grandpas before COVID was something they looked forward to. They loved it, and we, were, and we were grateful to get a night off being parents every week. The girls enjoyed wearing your clothes and shoes, and you enjoyed bonding with them. Saturday morning breakfast of, of Ogiana Kara grandmas was never to be missed. 
You were very intentional about them knowing Abba. You bought them Bibles and personal devotionals as they grew and made sure they were reading them, learning the word, and also doing Bible study. You invested the time to teach them the Bible each week and watch Superbook with them, explaining it to them and asking them questions to test, your, test their knowledge. You taught them how to pray. You prayed with them and for them. You attended school plays, speech days, musical, musical recitals, f- school fun days, graduation days. You never missed seeing your grandchildren thrive, and they all miss you so much. So I thank God for the 76 plus years he gave you on earth. You, ate, you did eat the fruit of your labor. You saw us all be successful. You saw your children's children, and you enjoyed us all. Thank you for being an excellent wife, the best mother, and a loving grandmother. And I am confident that heaven rejoiced greatly as you entered into its pearly gates. You have done extremely well here, mommy. Now enter your rest. Enjoy your heavenly father, your many mansions, and wear your crown with honor. I'll miss many things about you, like your checkup calls, your autodrometer auto- calls, when we only spoke just yesterday. I'll miss your smile. I'll miss just with you. I'll miss your summons to come and help you match your outfits or solve a word puzzle that you were stuck on. I'll miss seeing you dance and taking pictures of us all. I'll miss the endless supply of fresh fish, ikokore, akaranogi, on the steady. I'll miss you sharing the word of God, your words of wisdom. I'll miss your prayers. I'll miss laughing with you, and most especially, I'll miss your gentle spirit and your deep love for me. I love you, mommy. I'll miss you, mommy. I'll miss you a lot. Till we meet to part no more. Your baby, Olua Damilola. So I'll end with one of your favorite songs. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Damilola. And Dr. Kemi Quenin is here, so she will just go next and give her tribute. Please encourage her. Good evening, everyone. My dear mommy, I can't believe I'm writing your tribute. This is still a shock, and you have left way too soon. Words cannot describe or capture what you meant to me. Growing up, you were a strict, firm mom, but your firm hand turned me into who I am today. You were loving, yet not deviating in your values, and I came to learn that as an adult. You taught us all the values of God and family. You taught us to stay close and always put God first. You were a mom to many, and you did it so effortlessly. I remember as a child, many kids passed through our doors for training from you. Any waywardness was gone by the time you had finished with them. You touched so many lives, but for me, you were mommy through and through. You were there through all my milestones, through all my decisions. You were there through my youthful crisis and when I took off on various tangents. You followed me wherever I went and did the same for my siblings. You were there when I took decisions, sometimes deemed as controversial by others. Your teaching saw me through medical school. I recall you always reminding me to pray and read the Bible regularly, whenever we spoke or in your letters to me. As a result, I have so many testimonies of how I passed exams, found items I lost, and even avoided death on a couple of occasions. You were the perfect example of a power of a praying mom. I would like to share an excerpt from one of your letters to me when I was in medical school back in 1999. 
I think a lot of people in this room know Mommy as a Christian warrior, but she's been like this since forever. <laughs> It's not new. So I'll just read her letter. Hello, Kemi. How are your studies going? When is your next exam? Please let me know so I can pray along with you. Do you know that corporate prayers achieve a lot? You can email me as per your exam timetable. It is all going to be all right in Jesus' name. Medical School Birmingham will soon become history in your life in Jesus' name. I know you'll make it in flying colors in Jesus' name. Never, never say it is hard. Children of God must trust him and talk positively. Nothing is by our power. It is by God's grace that we are what we are. Our Father says, my grace is sufficient for all of us. And it is. So Kemi, it is not by your power, by your might, but by God's spirit. Work hard and trust him for success. Learn never to say anything negative about yourself. It is what you say that happens to you. There is power in the words we say. Apart from medics, how is life on the other side? Take time to relax. All work and no play make Jack a dull boy. But you will not be dull in Jesus' name. Amen. This was just a snippet of the constant teaching you always gave to me. Mommy, you love me unconditionally and love my children the same. I will always remember all your teachings, advice, and guidance that you gave me and the children. You helped where I could not. You helped me with school runs, even as a grandma, helped with homework, and stood for me when I was back late from work. I did not understand the meaning of school runs until I became a mom and had to come back and thank you for doing that for us for 14 good years. From First Act Town to Ikoyi, and there was no third mainland bridge back then. Wow, what an awesome mom you were. You studied the Bible with my children regularly and prepared them so well that your passing has been almost seamless for them. You were selfless. You were all for family. You were the bond that kept us together, the glue in our Anibaba family unit. You always saw the best in everyone, even when they didn't always treat you right. You always looked for the positive side of people first. You truly lived like Christ and lived for Christ. Mommy, I remember when I first started becoming interested in boys, and you used to sit me down for long lectures. I'm sure my siblings remember those lectures. Your words of wisdom. You didn't shout. You didn't smack. Your words were enough to do the resetting required. Your words of wisdom steered me in the right direction, so much, so much so that when it came to choosing my spouse, you prayed over it and supported me once you got your answer from Christ, though many others were not supportive initially. You became a mommy to Matthias as well and counseled us through our marriage too. I still can't believe you are gone. It's like a dream. In life, you taught me Christ, and even in death, you still taught me Christ. Your diagnosis came as a shock, but a shock that I knew only God could help us with. Through, through your very short illness, you were steadfast in your faith. And even at the end, the day before your passing, I heard you say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. And then, Jesus, take me home. Jesus, take me home. Jesus, take me home. I knew then in my heart you had seen Jesus and you would go home to him eventually. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that it would be the very next day. But God knows best. I've been encouraged by a passage that was spoken to me recently. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. 15. You were indeed precious. Sleep on, my beloved. That cannot be filled. A mother's love and attention cannot be replaced. Mommy was always in the background, following us with us. You felt her presence even when she wasn't talking. She loved her family and loved having everyone around her, especially her grandchildren. Whenever I was running late for an event, a family event like a birthday or Christmas, she would call to follow up and say, Olufemi, where are you? She'll be here by now. 
I took for granted that she'll always be here. When I came back from the United Kingdom a few weeks ago, I was expecting her message. She will have asked her usual questions. Have you landed? How was your flight? Are you on your way home? Have you collected your suitcases? I recall my childhood with nostalgia. Mommy would wake up very early to get us ready for school. Then after school drop off, she'll go to the office. Then after the office, she'll help with homework and so on. She was always on the move and never tired, never sick. Or perhaps she just never told us when she was. My mom was strict when we were young. And being the first child, I remember the punishment. She didn't take any nonsense and didn't want us hanging around bad friends. She had time and energy. But as we got older, that moved more to counseling and conversations. And in her gentle manner, she will tell you what you did wrong and what you should do better. She had an effective way of getting her point across without raising her voice. She was very interested in her academics and her schoolwork. She wanted to know what was going on in our lives even after we left the country as teenagers. Mommy loved having everyone around. Her grandkids were special to her. She devoted time teaching them the Bible and including some of their friends as well. She didn't compromise on this. Mommy loved my dad. They were married for over 49 years and shared many experiences. They could often be seen at home playing board games like Monopoly, Ludo, and Scrabble with a competitive spirit and running commentary about who was winning or cheating. There's really a roar of laughter after this. My mom was very hardworking. She worked for many years with a high level of commitment and dedication. I recall her at a young age working um, in the business world locally and internationally. She would travel for business meetings, then seamlessly return into her mommy role. Visiting her in the office and watching her manage a multitude of staff, supply and customer issues was inspiring. Then she would launch into homework mode, then face heavy traffic on the way home, then repeat the cycle daily. Being a parent now, I don't know how she managed it all, but she did. I can't talk about my mom without talking about her spiritual life. My mom constantly ensured we read the Bible, learned Bible verses, praised God, thanked God in everything we did. She would ask about her spiritual life as well. She was a passionate evangelist, both within, and out, within the family and outside the family. She was very focused on winning souls and took every opportunity to do so. My mother was an epitome of a real Christian. I'm not just saying this because she's my mother, but I saw her transformation from when we were young and the consistency in her faith. My mom was sweet and gentle, who deeply cared about her spiritual life. I still remember her words. Have you thanked God? Do you pray today? Pray for your children. Do you have a family altar? Learn Psalm 91. Join Bible Fellowship. There was also... Orowa, which means she's about to go into a lecture about things I wasn't doing. Or Otojometa, when I haven't called for a few days, or even when we just spoke the day before. It was indeed a life well lived. She'll be greatly missed by a lot of people. Most of all, she'll be missed by her immediate family. We're thankful for the time we had, <clears throat> and that God placed her in our lives. We are thankful that she passed on to glory after a brief illness. She continues to be present in our lives and her legacy and impact will be passed on to the next generation. Rest in peace, mom, and we shall meet again in a place where there is no more death, suffering, or pain. God bless and keep you. I love you, mom. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Femi. And let's just thank God for those words the bible says that the memory of the just is blessed let's clap let's celebrate god for wonderful memories thank him for an awesome testimony of faithfulness in our in her work with god and for the next few minutes please sit back as we reflect on the life and times of pastor mrs ronke anibaba Mrs. Adenronke Agbeke Anibaba was born in October 1946 to the family of Pa Abiodun Adebanjo of Ububu in Ijebude and Mrs. Adebisi Oshinusi of Imobalufo at Masi Hospital in Lagos State. She went to 
Mrs. Adenronke Agbeke and Nibaba was born in October 1946 to the family of Pa Abiodun Adebanjo of Ogbogbo in Ijebode and Mrs. Adebisi Oshinusi of Imobalufo at Masi Hospital in Lagos State. She went to Anglican Girls Primary School at Broad Street in Lagos. She then went on to Methodist Girls High School in Yaba, where she was a prefect. Her old classmates recall that she was very well behaved in school. She studied A-levels at St. Anne's School in Ibadan. During that time, she started a temporary job at Kingsway Store in Lagos, and this is where she met the love of her life, Dr. Obafemi Anibaba. The physics theatre was on vacation job in Kingsway Stores in Lagos Marina, but I was posted to give lecture, and there was this particular Saturday I was on, you know, on duty and uh, my darling gave my lung. He said he wanted a gift, wanted a white gift for a friend. So I thought it was serious, I was helping him look for gifts. I asked details about who he wanted to give the gift to. And eventually it was just wasting my time. I realized it wasn't serious, so I just got up from him and moved away from him. If God has chosen somebody for you. When I saw him, I said, no, I can never marry him. But I knew that, I, you know, the qualities I had are just unique. And I thank God that I was married to him. He went on to do preliminary exams at the University of Lagos, where he was also studying, and their relationship blossomed from there. Her degree course was biochemistry done at the University of Ibadan. After she graduated, she and Obafemi got married on July 27, 1974, and she moved to the United Kingdom to join him as he had started his PhD program there already. While there, with her husband's encouragement, she studied a master's degree in business administration at the University of Surrey. Of note is that she gave birth to her firstborn the day before her final exam, and she left the hospital the next day to sit the exam to the surprise of her colleagues and lecturers. They could not believe it, and more so, she passed in flying colours. They lived in the UK for about five years and had two children while there. She had a third child after her return to Nigeria, though she travelled back to the UK to deliver. They moved back to Nigeria in 1979. She proceeded for her youth cop service and then went on to work at the Federal Housing Authority, where she became the head of the Department of Administration. Afterwards, she went to work with her father in his company, Copiers Nigeria Limited. She quickly rose to become the managing director of Copiers, and she ran this successfully till she retired at the age of 60. Mrs. Anibawa raised her three children, Olufemi, Olukemi, and Oluwada Minola well, but had several other adopted children, too numerous to count. This was because she had a gift of raising well brought up children and many mummies brought their kids home to her for training. There was always another child in the house at some point when her children were young. She was a great advisor and full of wisdom and was always very generous with her advice. Over time, even adults came to her for words of wisdom and she soon realized she had a gift for marriage counseling. I believe that we all need to take stock of our life. I wish him well, wish him divine health, I wish him joy, peace. And the prayer we always pray together is that if Jesus tarries, we will serve him to the end. We will not have cause to depart from her likes. She always had a house fellowship going on in her home for most of her adult life. She supported several charity homes and the needy, and she did this on a monthly basis through her and her husband's foundation. She stood by her husband as a praying wife while he was a federal minister and started prayers along with other ministers' wives to pray for their families. Mommy, as she was fondly known by everyone, attended the City of David Redeemed Christian Church of God and was an active member of the elders group called Wisdom Group. She was also an active member of Handmaidens and was the chairperson of the Evangelism Committee. She was active in this duty till her passing. She attended the Redeemed International Bible Leadership Academy, Ryla, in 1996 and 1997. Some years later, she was ordained as a deacon in 2014. 
as an assistant pastor in 2018 and as a full pastor in 2022. She also graduated from the RCCG School of Disciples in 2022. Mommy was passionate about evangelism and won many souls to the kingdom. She was also an active member of the church's marriage counseling department and did a lot of premarital and postmarital counseling. Lots of marriages are still standing today because of her counsel. Mommy Anibaba embraced her children's spouses as if they were her own. She was grandmother to eight beautiful grandchildren whom she saw regularly. Next Friday, I'm expecting all my grandchildren to be here so that the guy is at my mouth and uh, away to I of tomorrow on Fiataka. But they appear to be so I know there's a grand smith in the same hands up. Okay, I accept. Enjoy your sleep. See you next weekend. And be good girls. They spent every weekend with her and she taught them a wealth of knowledge about God, the Bible and life. Even their friends all knew grandma. Pray for you, sir. Even when you will become grandchildren, the children will be well settled. They will not have to for for their for your own grandchildren. Amen. I want to thank God for this beautiful husband that God gave me. Even though we are wives. Amen. 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 She bought them all Bibles, devotions, and the whole series of Superbook, a Bible cartoon series produced by CBS, and watched it with them. She took her time to explain each episode and then bought three copies of each episode and sent to each of their household. This invaluable quality time can never be replaced. Mommy Anibaba had a calm and gentle spirit and was soft-spoken. She was a precious gem and left an indelible mark on everyone she met. No one was ever the same after an encounter with her. She prayed for every soul she met, including acquaintances and even strangers. She will not be forgotten. She lived a fulfilled life and ran her race well and finished strong. May her gentle soul rest in God's perfect peace. I told you we are friends. We and it's good to be friends before you marry because you know friends you understand yourself well. We really understood ourselves well. We knew what we wanted before we started. We are always together and we don't leave ourselves. Even when we had issues. <laughs> we are always together. I want to say that uh, my I call him to uh, baby tooth. I want to change it to sweetie. <laughs> in Jeremiah 31 and 3. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. The same God who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so welcome the voices in Zion as they sing a medley of songs. I won't forget you. I can't stop loving you. Fuck. 
forget you For I've loved you Too much For too long Though I can't See you now But I'll still love you Till the breath in my body is gone That is how it is with me And you'll forever be The only love I ever knew Many things in my lifetime, but darling, I won't forget you. How it is with me And you'll always be The only love I ever knew I'll forget many things in my lifetime Darling, I won't forget you.
It's useless to say So I'll just Those happy hours that we once knew, that we once knew. Welcome, Pastor Deola Adeyemi, as she sings, Lord, you are holy. you 
up and magnify your name. There's not enough words that I can say to tell you how much I appreciate all the wonderful things you've given me, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. It's my desire to praise you and tell you how much I love you. You're worthy of all of the honor, Lord, you're worthy of all of the praise. How you could give me so much mercy You didn't have to suffer and die for me Way back on Calvary But I just want to thank you I got to thank you Oh yes I do I just want to thank you Lord Thank you, thank you, thank you Lord, wonderful, glorious, holy and righteous, victorious, conqueror, triumphant and mighty, the deliverer, shield and defense, strong tower. Jesus, you are my best friend, omnipotent, omnipresent, soon coming King, you are the Alpha Omega. maker, our redeemer, the most high God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the God of all flesh. 
You are the Lord of our sister, our mother, our wife, grandmother, aunt, minister, Pastor Mrs. Aderonke, Anibaba. You said in your word that in all circumstances we shall give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. So Father, we say thank you. Kabiosi, we say thank you. The Most High God, we say thank you. Even though we may have questions, we say thank you. Even though we are hurting, we say thank you. Even though we shall miss her, thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, our Father. Thank you for giving us a precious gift. Father, we say thank you. As we spend some moments in your word, please. We pray, oh God, that at the end of this session, our joy will be full and your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Please, uh, let's give the choir a big round of applause. And then Minister Diola Adiemi, God bless you. Thank you very much. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank God for my pastor. Pastor Edowu, Ilio Made, and my pastor, Pastor Mrs. Shiju Ilio Made, for giving me this opportunity to bring the word to the people of God, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, we welcome everyone to this beautiful service of songs. Actually, I feel like there's nothing more to say because testimonies, have blessed me personally tremendously. Even though I knew Auntie Ronke a bit closely, but many of the things I've heard tonight have been mind-blowing. And um, But I'll still share a few thoughts that I wrote down here when Pastor said I should bring the word. We thank God for the life of Pastor Mrs. Ade Ronke and Ibaba. And I commiserate with um, the entire Anibaba and the Adebanjo families, our church family, uh, on our passing. And uh, may the God of all comfort strengthen and comfort us all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 4, one of our pastors mentioned this scripture. That blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I've been there before. My mother and my father passed away the same year, in 2006. And um, I can tell you that it is the, the, the grief is real. So we need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. God will comfort you, sir. God will comfort the children. God will comfort the body of Christ in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mommy Anibaba, as some of us fondly called her, was an excellent wife of Pastor Dr. Femi Anibaba, an excellent mother to all our children, as you can see from the testimonies, an excellent minister of God in the house of God and everywhere she went. She was a woman of excellence. She had so much impact on many people, myself and my sweetheart inclusive. 
and from the testimonies we've heard, our life will always be a blessing. When we remember and reminisce on our life, we will still be blessed. For some of us, she was inspirational. For my darling wife and I, we always admired her joyful poise, her strength, her love for God, her love for her husband and family, and this inspired us tremendously. Many times, my, my darling wife would say, ah, we haven't gone to see the Annie Babas, so let's go and say hello to them. Mommy Aderonke Annie Baba was an epitome of love. I heard someone say an epitome of humility, and that is true. But what I wrote here is an epitome of love. An authentic Christian, worthy of emulation. Someone told me a story a few months ago how a pastor was being humiliated by another pastor. But he did not revenge. So when the other pastor was having a celebration, he went there, even though he was not invited, and gave him a gift and left. So on the day they were dedicating the church of the younger pastor, the man of God that was humiliating him came for the dedication. He also was not invited, but he still came. And then they said, do you have a testimony? He raised up his hand. And he said, I came here because God has shown me a Christian. That this pastor is a Christian. That got me thinking. Are there pastors that are not Christians? Mommy Anibaba was a Christian. A Christian. Whenever we saw her, we saw the love of God oozing out of her. You can see from the testimonies. Many times in church, she would just walk up to me, and I'm sure to many other pastors, if we could all share our testimonies. And she would say, Pastor Trevor, how is your sweetheart? Maybe she hasn't seen her in church for a, for a few weeks. Please send your, my love to your wife and the children. She was a follower of Christ. It just occurred to me that it doesn't take much to manifest Christ-likeness. A kind word, a smile, a phone call, consistency in doing that little thing you're doing. It ministers. You may not be aware that people are watching, but people are watching. And you're touching lives in your own little space. Christ-likeness is beautiful to behold and desirable to emulate. If an unbeliever wants to know what a Christian looks like, point them to Mommy Anibaba and the life she lived. That is the definition, in my view, of a Christian. The Bible tells us how you can tell who is a true disciple or a Christian. In Acts of the Apostles 16, 25, and 26, Acts of the Apostles 16, 25, and 26, that was where the Jews were first called Christians. And it says, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Why? Because they saw that they were behaving exactly like Jesus. So, my definition from here is that a Christian is someone whose behavior and heart reflects Jesus Christ. A follower of Jesus Christ. Their behavior and their heart reflects Jesus Christ. Why is this important? Because I've found out, and I'm sure parents here have also found out, that people connect with your consistent behavior more than what you say. 
Indeed, children, you could see the testimony of the children. They were learning more from her character, her behavior, than from what she was actually saying. What you're saying is very important, don't get me wrong. However, your behavior says a lot more than what you can say in words. So Jesus Christ says in Matthew 7 20, he says in Matthew 7 20, he says, therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. It is good to be gifted. It is good to have miracle working power. It is good to have the gift of prophecy. It is good to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need all these gifts to be effective in ministry. It is good to have the gift of word of knowledge, all the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Indeed, the Bible says we should covet earnestly the best gifts. So it is good to have them. However, the Bible says there is a more excellent way. Love. And that is the fruit of the Spirit. Mommy, Anibaba exuded love. She exuded the fruit of the Spirit. John 13, 34 to 35. John 13, 34 to 35 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, will, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I thank God for the life of mommy, Annie Baba, as we fondly called her. She was a beautiful signpost showing us the love of God and the way to the Father. I know that she's in heaven with God the Father. I will miss her. My sweetheart will miss her. Many of us will miss her. Pastor Heidi, I'm sure, will miss her. Pastor Shiju definitely will miss her. The pastors will miss her. Relatives will miss her. The children, of course, will miss her. Daddy Anibaba will certainly miss her. But you know, God has taken all this into consideration before he allowed her to come home. And the Bible says, I love the scripture that the young uh, child said, Grandma always taught them in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the same today, and forever. And he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So if God has allowed mommy to come home now, Daddy, I can assure you, sir, God will be with you. It will strengthen you. I can assure you, Femi Junior. I can assure you, all the daughters, all the in-laws, relatives, that God will not allow you to be comfortless. He will take care of all of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. When my parents passed on two in the same year, I thought the end had come. That was 2006. But today, by the grace of God, my siblings and I, we're still standing in the Lord and we give God all the glory. So God is faithful. God is faithful. He will take care of you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have seen that Momeni Baba is in heaven. So for us that are here, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. Why am I here? Because we can see clearly that Mommy Annie Baba's life was a life of purpose. She knew exactly what she was here for. She understood her assignment. She pursued it and she executed it excellently well. She finished her race and at the right time when God says it's time to go, she left. So the question we should ask ourselves is why am I here? Why did God allow me to come here? Second question, what should be my priority? Third question, how do I achieve number two? How do I achieve my priority? The question is, how come Mommy Anibaba had such beautiful testimonies? And the testimonies she has, why I love them in particular, is because she left legacies. She has built people, generations. Those children will never depart from those things. Praise the name of the Lord. 
How come she had those beautiful testimonies? And the glory of God always radiating on her life. Because she had a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ. She had a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ. Before I became born again, I actually thought I was enjoying myself in whatever I was doing. But the day I became born again, and I got back to my house, I said, ah, why did it take so long? Because we are saved by grace through faith. It is the grace of God. I give God all the glory. Mommy Adib Baba had a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ. So you're here or you're online and you have admired the life of this woman, a great apostle of the gospel, a great apostle of Christ. And you're saying to yourself, how was she able to achieve all this? Because she had a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know that God is looking for you? If you're not born again, he's looking for you. He's looking for you. I have people saying that I found Christ. I did not find Christ. Christ found me. I, I didn't even go to church to look for Christ. Don't ask me what I went there to do, but I didn't go there for Christ. But when I left that place, I knew that God had found me. Praise the name of the Lord. God is looking for you. The reason why you were born, the reason why he allowed you to live on this side of eternity, the reason why he has made you who you are is because he has an assignment for you. And you may say, well, I'm already too old. No, sir. No, ma. Moses started at 80. 80. Praise the name of the Lord. You may have been going on a trajectory. I was reading a book in an in a, in a aircraft. I read the whole book in the plane. And why I couldn't drop the book was because the book's title is How God Speaks to Us Today. And the person in the book said, the person was a very successful business person, a lady. And she had gotten to the top of her career. On one day, God showed her a vision of herself when she was young as a ballet dancer. And she was wondering what was going on. God said, I created you to be a ballet dancer. She wept. I wept on the plane myself. Because then I was doing something else. And God spoke to me on the plane. A business executive, vice president of a, of a corporation, was created to be a ballet dancer. Why are you here? To ask yourself that question, why am I here? Why? God has a plan for my life. You need to find it out. But without a relationship with Jesus, you will never know. Without becoming born again, you will never know. Without connecting with the person that created you, you will never know. Without your spirit connecting to the spirit of God, you will never know. So, you've come here by the grace of God. The greatest desire I know Mommy Ani Baba will have is that if you're not born again, you must become born again today. And that will happen by the special grace of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I asked my biological father a question in his days. I said, Dad, if you die today, do you know where you're going? He was a lawyer. Couldn't answer the question. I said, but if I die now, I know where I'm going. He said, really? I said, yes. He said, where are you going? I said, heaven. He said, you're sure? I said, yes. He said, so what do I need to do to be sure? I said, you need to give your life to Christ. He said, that's it? I said, yes. And I, pray, I led him to the sinner's prayer. And he became born again. Glory be to God. But what excited me about it all was that after he became born again, he said to me, I need you to give me two messages that I can be listening to continuously. I said, from who? 
He said, I want one from your pastor, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboe. I said, why? He said, because he's a humble man. And humble people have something to tell. He said, and I want your message. I said, why, sir? He said, because you're not the same person anymore. Something has happened to you. And I want to know what happened to you. Give the Lord a big round of applause. Amen. And that was what I gave him. In April... And he passed in December the same year in the Lord. I'm so excited. Anytime I remember it, I want to cry. So, being born again is a, I don't know how to describe it. I was telling someone last week, I said, the greatest gift God has given me is that he saved my soul. He saved my soul. Look at how important it is to God in heaven. Luke chapter 16, verse, Luke 15, verse 10. Luke 15, verse 10, in the Amplified Version. He says, in the same way I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Repentance means you change the way you think. You regret your past sins. You live your life in a way that proves repentance. And you seek God's purpose for your life. Another scripture in Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Luke 10, 20. He says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. Luke chapter 10. Is it there? Thank you very much. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Can I ask you a question? How many people want to go to heaven? You want to go to heaven? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you ready to go now? Now? Many people don't want to go now. Not because they're really doing anything serious here, but they're afraid of what will happen if they die. You should never be afraid of death. Never. Death is just a passage from one place to another. From the earth realm to heaven. That is all it is. That's all it is. Nothing more. Tell yourself, I am not going to be afraid of death. I can never be. Christ has conquered death. So, if you are not afraid of dying, then you should live ready. That God can take you anytime. Anytime. And you must be ready. You must be ready. You must be ready. But if you know that you are not ready, if you know that if God says it's time to go, you will have a problem then you need to settle that today please because believe you me you're not sure that you wake up on your bed tomorrow morning nobody can guarantee tomorrow only god can praise the name of the lord with those thoughts i would like us to just bow our heads and just have a short prayer tell god I'm not in the right place. You may have given your life before, but you know you're not there. You're not a Christian anymore. You have backslid. You're, you're back into the world system. If God allows you to, if you pass on now, you're not going to get into heaven. God forbid. So you need to rededicate your life to Christ. Tell him, Lord, have mercy upon me. Forgive all my sins. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. You must declare it. You must say it. The spiritual realm operates with words. You must say it. The demons must hear it. Angels must hear it. Heaven must hear it. Hell must hear it. That I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I confess him as my Lord. And once ownership, God owns you, no demon in hell can touch you. Satan cannot touch you. Nobody can come near you unless you allow them. So if you know, you know you're not born again. You've never confessed him as your Lord and Savior. But God is telling you, please come to me now. Please, I'd like you to just put your hand on your chest where you are. It's between you and God. Just put your hand on your chest and I'll pray with you. You may be online. You may also put your hand on your chest. 
and then God sees you. I don't need to see you, but God sees you. And please just repeat after me and say, Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I now confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Please forgive me all my sins. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. Have mercy upon me. And please write my name in the book of life. From today, help me to walk with you. Help me to serve you. Help me to know my purpose. Help me to know my priority. Help me to know where I should focus on. And help me to finish my race. Just as Mommy and Baba finished, help me to finish well. So when it's time to come home, I will arrive in heaven gloriously to the glory of your name. And I will have left amazing legacies behind on this side of eternity. Father, I thank you. And I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, I just want to say thank you. I know some people have prayed that prayer. Please reveal yourself to them in a special way. Let them come back to church and share their testimonies of how you visited them on this day. For those who are online that prayed as well, Father, bring them to church. And let us all rejoice together. And I pray for everyone here that by your grace and by your mercy, O oh God, you will satisfy every one of us and all our children with long life. And you will show us your salvation. And none of us, by your grace, will miss heaven. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for his word. To the family and to the church, that is the confidence we have. God will take care of you. Please welcome the voices in Zion as they sing, God will take care of you.
Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you. Just before I pray, um, Grandpa, as I fondly call you, Pastor Anibaba. Please accept our commiserations, my wife and I, on the passing on of grandma. Uh, my commiserations go to my very good friend, Dr. Mataz and Kemi Kweni, Femi, and the other children. We stand with you at this time, and we will continue in prayer. It's time for us to pray together. Um, Papa, please adopt whatever position is convenient for you. You may want to kneel or you want to come forward. Just be at ease and let's pray together. Can I invite the family members to come forward? But like I said, you could stand, you could kneel, you could sit as you choose. Shall we all pray together with this family? Heavenly Father and our God, we bless you tonight. Again, for the life of your daughter, our wife, our mother, our grandmother, our pastor. Your daughter who has, who has dedicated her entire life to your service. What a legacy. What a testimony. We glorify your name that you have allowed her to spend 76 plus years on the face of the earth. But those numbers will have counted for nothing if you didn't allow her to do all the things that you've strengthened her to do. Therefore, we give you praise and we give you thanks for her legacy. Father, please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. It's not for us to pray for the departed because scriptures declare in Revelation 22 and verse number 12, Revelation 22 verse number 12, the Bible says, Behold, I come quickly, I work with my reward with me, to give unto every man according as his work shall be. So we know that grandma is enjoying the fruit of her labor in the things of God. So it's not for us to pray for her tonight, but to pray for the beloved family that she left behind, including your church. I'd like to start lifting up your son, your servant, our grandfather, our father, our pastor, and our friend. Pastor, grandpa, Dr. Anibaba. It's been a journey of almost 50 years with Auntie. But it has pleased you to call her home at this point. The, the scriptures declare that you will not leave us alone, neither would you forsake us. We lift up grandpa to you tonight. We say as, as he faces life without his best friend, that you will not leave him alone. That you will keep him. That you uphold him in the name of Jesus. He's been heard as saying that I don't know how I'm going to cope. That's true. That is human. Sweet Holy Spirit, our comforter, we ask that you stand by his side. We ask that you strengthen him. We ask that you uphold him in the name of Jesus. Papa would not die suddenly just because Mama had gone. But Lord, you will lengthen his days. And I also declare that the remainder of your days, you will spend in peace and in health. The peace of God that passeth all human understanding will garnish your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Father, we pray 
that those things that and those voids that papa that mama had filled this past almost 50 years you will arise and you will feel it in the name of jesus sooner most of us will depart to various homes including the children and grandchildren and times will be when papa will remember when he is alone those memories fond memories at that time father arise by your spirit and uphold him in the name of jesus we pray for the children and the grandchildren scripture says i will not leave you as orphans i will not leave you without a comforter we pray that the heavenly comfort will come upon you will keep you will preserve you in the name of jesus we've heard so many testimonies good testimonies of how grandma had impacted people positively and i pray concerning even the least of the grandchildren that she's left behind where mama stopped will be your starting point in the name of our lord jesus christ it shall be written concerning you that those great seeds should sown in your lives from the youngest to the oldest of you they will grow they will germinate in the name of jesus we pray for family and friends and the church of god she's left behind we ask for strength from on high we ask for encouragement in the name of jesus and Lord, we pray as we continue with the remainder of the home-going ceremonies for Grandma, Father, continue to take preeminence. Let Jesus alone be glorified. In the course of tomorrow's service, bring souls to the kingdom. Because this is what you would love to see in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your church. The church of God will stand and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Finally and above all, let it be, O God. On the last day or whenever god shall call us that the testimony concerning every one of us shall be welcome thou faithful son welcome thou faithful daughters enter into the joy of your master we give you thanks and praise and glory for in jesus precious name we pray amen. can we hear louder amen. amen god bless you hallelujah we'll soon be done but as we celebrate a love that will never die, please welcome the voices in Zion as they sing, Always, I'll be loving you, always. <laughs> Sure that I'll be loving you all the way As now can't reveal the mystery of tomorrow But in passing we'll grow older every day Just as all that's born is new Do know what I say is true That I'll be loving you all the way Until I'm never gonna stop no more.
never gonna stop I'd like to first of all start by thanking God for bringing us here to celebrate the life of our beloved mother. Next, I'd like to thank Pastor Ido, Ido Iluyomade and Pastor Shiji Iluyomade for your support throughout this difficult time. I'd like to thank all the excellencies and captains of industry around. Um, I'd like to thank the officiating ministers. And I would like to thank all the friends and family for your prayers, your support, and your presence here. And um, your gifts during this period has been really overwhelming. And my prayer is that everybody will make it to heaven at the right time. Not today, though, at the right time. <laughs> um, and thank you once again. Jordan Mercy is back home for everybody. And God bless. Thank you. I appreciate Femi and Ibaba Jr. And once again, it's my privilege to welcome everyone to the City of David. This is a parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Thank you for coming to support the family at this time. Our prayer indeed is that in our own time of need, we would always find help from God's sanctuary. And God will keep us as we go home in Jesus' name. Especially, I want to appreciate Pastor Ido Liomade. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Dr. Shichu Liomade. Thank you for your love, your support, your leadership. God bless you indeed. I want to appreciate Pastor Femi Atoyebi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you, sir. Always good to have you here with us. Our uh, officiating ministers today, I appreciate Pastor Trevor and Pastor Tunrayo Akindele. Pastor Africano Sambe Pele, Pastor Emeka Okide, Pastor Ayo Lokun, Pastor Hyacinth Aneke, uh, Pastor Chide Kolade is here, um, Pastor Doi Areho, Pastor Regina Jemide, Pastor Ayo and Pastor Kofo Thomas, Wisdom Group, Elders, School of Disciples, all who have gathered here. I know this list is uh, not exhaustive, I, I, I apologize. Uh, Especially let us appreciate the voices in Zion and the apostles. And I appreciate Pastor Deola Adeyemi. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Ushers, multimedia, all who have been working behind the scenes to give us a seamless service. God bless you all. Uh, thank you for coming to the City of David. Tomorrow morning here at 10 o'clock, we have the funeral service. I'm sure the family would be delighted for all to 
come and join us as we appreciate God and we finalize the rites for our dearly beloved Bob. Uh, before I forget, I long to appreciate all those who have followed on YouTube and Zoom. Um, I know that um, once in a while, multimedia has shown them. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining the family at this service. At the end of the service, um, the ushers will guide us so that we depart in an orderly manner. Uh, for a moment, I would probably request that you remain in your seats, but God will guide us safely home. As we have had today, Okay, as we depart from the sanctuary um, uh, in an orderly exit, I know that um, some people came through the ramp in front, some people came through the back. Um, um, it's easy to get out of the sanctuary, uh, but if you're, if you're dropped off by your cars and your drivers, you can just make a phone call. You can be picked up either at the back or in front, um, and God will guide us as we leave. But thank you. Um, as we have had today, at the end of this life for us as Christians, the most important thing for us is to make it to heaven. Please welcome Emmanuel Obano as he sings, When It's All Been Said and Done. So when it's all been said and done There'll be just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? So when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you
it's all been said and done There'll be just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth Did I live my life as he gives the benediction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are here to celebrate the life of a general. We are not here to mourn. So let somebody praise the Lord. Better. Please shall we rise as we take the closing prayer and benediction. Eternal Rock of Ages, we want to bless your name for the gift of mommy to the church to the family, to the nation, and to this generation. Father, we are grateful for a life of impacts. We are grateful for revealing yourself through her life. We are grateful that even at, that, at death, she is ministering the life of Jesus even more. Father, glory, honor to your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, once again, we want to commit the family, immediate family, church family. We pray that you continue to strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are praying the name that is above our name. Let her life inspire us to live a life of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you will continue to unite the family and the church in the name that is above our name. That for every one of us that will not depart this world without an encounter with Christ in the name of Jesus. And I declare as we go that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you in the name of Jesus. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the believer in the house will say better. Amen. Swift to his close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim. Its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. Our closing hymn is on page seven of our programs.
holds you that is grace be over you
Goodness of God. 